The year is 1933. Pontiac wanted to offer an eight-cylinder for their clientele of their very own design. For those that don't know, Pontiac was one of the companion makes. GM made junior makes for all GM brands. They all got a companionship make except for Chevy. Oakland had Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Viking, Buick, Marquette, Cadillac, LaSalle. Pontiac and Oakland switched in 1931. Oakland used a flathead V8 that was shared with Viking, which will get its own episode one day. The first year of Pontiac used a 251 cubic inch displacement flathead V8 from Oakland, but Pontiac wanted to offer an engine of their very own. Pontiac decided to go with an inline straight eight design, which they would build from 1933 through 1954. 21 years in four displacements, 223, 233, 249, and 268. Just to be clear, this is an engine overview episode. We are not getting into building these engines on this episode. Horsepower figures, bore and stroke sizes may be rounded. Pontiac named their engine the Silver Streak. It's also important to note that during this time period, this wasn't Pontiac's only engine on offer. They also offered a flathead six. Pontiac's inline flathead straight eight was designed by Ben Annibel at the direction of Charles Kettering. The engine had to be strong, reliable, with smooth whisper quiet when running, capable of running high speeds for extended periods of time. But most of all, it had to be inexpensive to produce. This engine featured right out of the gate replaceable insert bearings for both rod and main bearings and full pressurized oil lubrication. You have to remember during this time period most engines featured poured Babbitt bearings and splash lubrication as the industry standard. Making its debut in 1933 and being produced until 1935, 223.4 cubic inch displacement flathead in line 8, 3.7 liters. Don't get this confused with the flathead 6 that has the same displacement. It could make anywhere between 77 to 84 horsepower at 3,800 RPM. It makes around 116 pound feet or 157 newton meters at 2200 rpm with a bore of 3.1875 inches and a stroke of 3.5 inches. This engine family features five main bearings. Compression was 5.7 to 1, built of cast iron. Years this engine was used, 1933 to 1935. In 1936, the 223.4 was bored out to 3.25, bringing displacement to 232 cubic inch displacement. The block casting featured full length water jackets for better cooling. The cylinder barrels were no longer visible on the driver's side. The cooling system utilized cross flow radiator with a pressurized cap of 4 PSI, 232.3 cubic inch displacement, flathead eight. 3.8 liters is good for 87 horsepower, 3,800 RPM, 116 pound-feet, or 157 newton meters at 2,200 RPM, which is also an estimate. Bore of 3.25 inches and a stroke of 3.5 inches. Compression is 6.5 to 1, featured 5 main bearings. This engine was only available for one year, 1936. In 1937, the 232 grew to 248.9 cubic inch displacement. It also received a new Scotch Mist intake manifold, which featured an improvement heat riser utilizing a thin wall metal tube, which drastically increased heat transfer to a cold engine. The tube was a seasonal adjustment piece. 248.9 cubic inch displacement in line 8, 4.1 liters. It's good for anywhere between 100 to 106 with the high compression head at 3,800 RPM. 190 pound feet or 258 newton meters at 2200 rpm with a bore of 4.3 inches and a stroke of 4.8 inches. Compression could be anywhere between six and a half to one for the regular version or they offered a high compression head version which brought compression up to 7.5 to one. 
Five main bearings. The years this engine was used was between 1937 through 1949. In 1950, the 248.9 was enlarged for what would be the last time to the displacement of 268.4 cubic inch displacement. Flathead in line 8, 4.4 liters. It's good for anywhere between 108 all the way up to 127 horsepower at 3,400 RPM, 222 pound-feet or 301 newton meters at 2,200 RPM with a bore of 3.4 inches and a stroke of 3.8 inches. Compression could be had in two compression ratios, 6.7 to 1 with the standard head or 7.7 to 1 with the high compression head. Five main bearings. The years this engine was used was from 1950 through 1954. Pontiac, along with Packard, were the last two brands to hold on to their straight eights, but the V8 is what the buying public wanted, powerful and compact with overhead valve. And it's a bit ironic, don't you think, that Pontiac straight eight would get replaced by the same engine configuration that the Pontiac straight eight uh, replaced back in the day. The Pontiac V8 would be produced from 1955 until 1981, but as they say, that's an episode for another day. Now it's time for Would You Rather, two scenarios today. In the first scenario, 1933 Pontiac or 1934 Pontiac or 1935 Pontiac. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Now it's time for the second scenario, all wagons, 1940 Pontiac wagon or 1949 Pontiac wagon or 1953 Pontiac wagon. Once again, going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have your comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted. It will always be like that because this is more than just a car channel. It is a car community that I'm very much a part of. We have a Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you don't have Facebook and would like to reach me outside of YouTube, send me an email. All of it will be linked in the description below. Just know that I appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section. And until next time, toodaloo! Searching for soda bottles, get myself some dough.